Hello, it's Mr. Robs here, and today we're going to talk about affine transformations and fractals. Um, and this is this question is a review from our last class we did, but it is an affine transformation. And we're going to talk about what this word actually means uh, in a little bit longer, but we don't need to know that for this one. But we do consider that we have matrix A as such. Hexagon H has an area of 9, and we don't know what hexagon H is or anything about it other than the area, but it's transformed by A. We also know matrix B is defined by this ugly matrix, and B represents the combined effect of, of the transformation represented by matrix X, followed by transformation represented by matrix A. Okay, so first part. A part says to describe fully the three geometrical representations from A. Now, for this particular video, before I start it, I really think you should pause it and give this one a go on your own because it's review from what you've done in the past, so really do try it first. Okay, so for A, there's a bunch of things going on here. The first thing is this negative 4 here. I know that it was at 1 time 0, 1, or 1, 0. And so that 1, 0 has gone over here to negative and 4. So it's done two things. It's reflected over the uh, y-axis. And it's been stretched horizontally by 4. And that goes, that's the negative 4. The 3, well, 0, 1 has turned down to 0, 3, which is up here. So it has had a vertical stretch. Stretch by Okay, so those are the three transformations by A. Now it's from the area of the image of H. So I have some hexagon somewhere, six sides, with an area of nine. I don't have the hexagon, I know. And so if you remember from the other day, if I take the determinant of A, take the absolute value of it, and multiply it times the area, you will get the new area of the image. So the determinant of A is going to be Four, negative 4 times 3, which is 12, subtract the 0. Absolute value of negative 12 is 12, times the area of A of the hexagon, and that is going to be 108 centimeters squared, is the area of the new hexagon H. C part now says find matrix X. Well, what is X again? It is a so B represents the combined effect of the transformation represented by a matrix X followed by the transformation represented by A. So X goes first and then A. So I write them in the opposite order. When I multiply those two together, I get B is what this is saying here. So I want to find X. In order to find X, I'm going to use my matrix algebra and multiply in here the inverse of A in here and in front. When I multiply here, that will give me I. And so the inverse of A, if I just go to the side here, A inverse, I switch these two around. So I'll just do it over here. I switch them around, which is 3, negative 4, and I negative the zeros, which remains the same. That's the A inverse. This is A inverse. But I have to also put the discriminant, 1 over the discriminant. The discriminant of A is negative 12. And so then this is B will equal to X. And B is negative 2, negative 2, 3, 3 root 3, 2 over negative 3, 2. So when I go ahead and multiply all of that, I'm going to leave this out front first because I don't want to multiply that as fractions. I know I have to multiply in this order, but I can keep this coefficient out until the end. And this is going to give me x. So I get 3 times, so this is negative 6 times 0. 3 times, this is negative 6 root 3. And then 
zero times that, and this will be negative six root three as well, and then this one will give me a negative six, positive six. Now I'll multiply in the negative one twelfth, which will give me one half, a root three over two, root three over two, and a negative one half. And so this is my matrix X is equal to X. Our D part says a matrix X is defined by reflection in a line. Well, if it's defined by a reflection in a line, then here are some transformations that I can recall. And so here's the reflection line. It's hard to see from the pixels, but I know what it says. Reflection is cosine 2 theta, sine 2 theta, sine 2 theta minus cosine 2 theta is the matrix for the line y is equal to tangent theta x. So based upon that, what I can do is I have to recognize that this value here is cosine 2 theta, sine 2 theta, sine 2 theta, negative cosine 2 theta. So I can just simply say that cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 half. And so then 2 theta, using my calculator, and I know the, this one off by heart, is 60 degrees. Divide it by 2, and I will get 30 degrees. And so now, I know theta is 30 degrees. It's been reflected over some line, y equals tangent theta x. And specifically, it is tangent 30 degrees of x. Well, I put this in my calculator, and again, I know this one off by heart, the exact value. I get square root 3 over 3. And this is the equation of the line, which I could also do at y is equal to 0 0.577 x, which is also the equation of the line. That is part of this, is what is represented by matrix x. This is quite a challenging problem, but if you give it a try, if you need help the first time, try it again in a few days on your own.